Dear friends, first I would like to thank you all and Forum for Democracy and especially Thierry Baudet for inviting me. For me it's an honor to be here and I'm very happy to be around like-minded people and to be able to share some thoughts <laughs> about the current state of the European Union and our continent. Currently, I'm member of parliament and also member of the parliamentary commissions on foreign affairs and European affairs, foreign policy and European affairs. I'm in regular contact with European partners of ours and I'm convinced that all EU members and Europeans as a whole, we all suffer from the same illness and consequences. We suffer the same poor decisions and pathetic policy of Brussels. European Union is not leading Europe to a good path and it is in its current state it constitutes a political danger for the European civilization. There are a lot of evident problems which are being neglected and they show us that European Union does not behave properly at all, that it has become politically important union which is not capable to define the problem nor offering a solution. Let me list some of them very poor handling, if any, of the illegal migration. It is debatable if Europe is capable of resolving this problem on its own, even if it really wants to. Unfortunately, we see that there are no coordinated actions. The first line states are practically left facing the problem alone, while Europe, while Europe is, being, is being flooded with illegal migrants from decades. The desire to transform the Union into a single supranational state and to neglect the national constitutions. Let me recall the words of former French President Charles de Gaulle claiming that Europe must be Europe of nations and not of supranational elites. We also share these values. Also, traditional European values, which represent the foundation of the European civilizations, are being, are being abandoned. EU is becoming more and more bureaucratic and less oriented toward its citizen. And least, but not last, I will mention the fact that the European Union is unable to defend, it, to defend the European interest on the global geopolitical scene. A lot of examples can be given to justify this last affirmation, but I will concentrate on one. More than a year, we are unable or unwilling to find a solution to a military conflict, and more than a year, a war is taking place in Europe. We should act as global leader and put the interest of Europe at first place, and this means war in Europe must end now. The European Union approach to the conflict is absurd. A year ago, I remember, Ursula von der Leyen declared that the Russian military is taking chips from dishwashers and refrigerators to fix their military hardware because they run out of semiconductors. I don't know how many dishwashers or refrigerators are there in Russia, but... <laughs> But Ukraine is not winning the war despite all the military help so far. So far, the policy of the European Union is limited to sending weapons and ammunition to Ukraine and imposing massive and unprecedented sanctions against Russia. This approach is a failure. The number of victims is rising. And the existence of Ukraine, as, as we know it, is under threat and the country is facing a demographic catastrophe. A few days ago, the former Prime Minister of Ukraine, Nikola Azarov, announced that currently the population of Ukraine is about 23 million. 3.5 million are capable to fight. The young qualified people capable to work flees the country. Before the war, for information, the population of Ukraine was estimated at about 41 million. Obviously, sending weapons and ammunition is not going to solve the conflict. 
Moreover, the risk of escalation is increasing. The second main instrument after providing weapons to Ukraine, the economic sanctions against Russia also proved to be ineffective, counterproductive and devastating to its unintended victims. They do more damage to European economy than to Russian one. World energy prices are rocket high, inflation is soaring, supply chains are chaotic. And millions of people are being affected by shortage of gas, grain, and fertilizer. Europe deprived its economy from, from Russian energy resources and ceased economic connections with Russian federations, Federation at all levels. But we all pay a very high price. In the meantime, Asian countries, oil and gas purchases from Russia have risen sharply. Russian oil now constitutes for about 20% of India's annual crude imports, up from just 2% in 2021. Crude oil production in the Russian Federation is indeed slightly lower due to sanctions, but still remains above 10 million barrels a day. A new pipeline, a new pipeline known, known as Power of Siberia, is due to be completed later this decade and could make Russia China's biggest supply of gas. From 30th of September this year, there are sanctions on Russia originating iron and steel in the UK and in the European Union. And what is really impressive is that, to my knowledge, United States did not impose these sanctions, which makes the situation even more stupid and absurd. To end the war and to find the peace, we need a serious diplomatic initiative, analysis and understanding of the situation. Not more weapons, sanctions and victims. I still remember the Bulgarian mass media. I still remember the Bulgarian mass media in the early phase of the war explaining to Bulgarian people that Putin got depressed had psychological problems, with only a few friends remained in his circle, and that's why he decided to attack Ukraine. He has cancer. Oh, so he has cancer, yes. This is no longer the case, but we still did not hear analysis nor explanations of the reason for the conflict in the mass media. Our party revival wanted to take the diplomatic initiative in this direction and to help find peace. Historically, Bulgaria had friendly relations with Russia and Ukraine and could have helped finding a peace. Instead, our government also started exporting weapons and ammunition to Ukraine. European Union countries, Netherlands, should take their deserved role as global leaders and stop put themselves in passive position, which only follows the policy of the global powers mainly United States. Europe has many and urgent issues to solve, to solve problems which put in danger the existence of Europe as we know it. To do so, European Union must be reformed, must be more capable politically, economically, and be able to face the global challenges. Thank you.